My presentation will proceed by firstly discussing why the Lomé Summit is important. I'll briefly look at the provisional programme of side events, uh, touch upon why cooperation and coordination is so important, and conclude with some recommendations. The uh, Lomé Summit is a great opportunity. The African heads of state and government will assemble uh, on the 15th to discuss and hopefully sign a legally binding charter. Uh, the legally binding charter presented for signature contains many comprehensive recommendations dealing with how um, proposing and also committing states to dealing with problems mm. such as piracy, illegal fishing, and also means of cooperating with each other, looking at things like information sharing, intelligence gathering, and also uh, conducting joint operations and exercises. Previous events have been postponed. I mention how important this event is because the, uh, the previous postponements have meant that a certain kind of momentum has been lost in terms of the production of maritime security in the African maritime domain. The previous events were expected to produce this charter and in the meantime various other events, for instance uh, joint naval gatherings, meetings on the sides of, uh, of AU meetings to, uh, to cope with maritime problems, and also looking at things like regional meetings to discuss regional maritime issues uh, have been slightly delayed. So the impetus, the, um, the end of an, kind of an inertia will be very important at the Lomé Summit. That's why this charter, or rather I should say, what, given that it is a charter, is so important because being a legally binding document, it can commit states, depending on the language used, to uh, concrete actions in the future. Uh, as I said, I briefly just defined some of the uh, concepts. We're often talking here about the blue economy. Now, the blue economy is going to be the creation of wealth from the maritime domain by enhancing or encouraging or establishing maritime industries such as fishing or tourism or oil and gas extraction. Now, those will have a very important impact on uh, not just the maritime domain, but states' own budgets and future development plans. That's contained, or can be read, uh, in the AU's Agenda 2063, very important roadmap to determine the future development path of African countries up to 2063. There are national examples of blue economies we could look at as well. Operation Pakisa here in South Africa is a drive by the government to enhance maritime industries. And also, say, talking about sustainable wealth, uh, ideally, in the end, we're looking at the kind of practices which can be maintained, protection of vulnerable resources at the moment, so that in the future they can be exploited. Perhaps exploited is not the correct word, but can be utilised in the future. Overall, we're often coping with what we call the uh, problem and trying to end the problem of sea blindness. Now, sea blindness, when we use it uh, and can be seen in many documents, such as uh, the, the, uh, the Charter, as well as the African Integrated Maritime Strategy, talk about realising the dependency of African states and African businesses, people, communities on safe, secure and sustainable maritime trade and uh, activities. Now, the, um, at present, the creation of agencies, the creation of centres to share information can reduce that kind of sea blindness. And through campaigns which introduce how important the maritime domain is to the wider to the wider world, we can realise just how um, important it is to coordinate activity for the future. And uh, the Lomé Summit, I say, is as a gathering of the heads of state, is the uh, the ultimate kind of event at which this can occur. There's been great progress in terms of the creation of uh, regional strategies, codes, and conventions, and now charters. Uh, as I say, some momentum has unfortunately also been lost in terms of the uh, practical side of things, the regular meetings of, uh, of, uh, of navies, of maritime agencies, not just nationally, internationally as well, and globally too. The, um, the TOGO meeting, therefore, the TOGO offered to, uh, to host this summit uh, a couple of years ago, in, uh, shall I say, at the uh, originally scheduled for 2015 in November, uh, twice postponed. The, uh, there's been a long time coming in that regard, and uh, the input from states and organisations along that time has been has been something to uh, to observe 
in terms of what kind of interest they want to see in this charter. There are other charters I could mention as well, such as the revised African Maritime Transport Charter. Now, this is something which has had some problems in terms of coming into force. States, as I say, perhaps we can say due to the problem of sea blindness, have not often um, introduced the charters widely, so there hasn't been a great deal of buy-in. And uh, so this, uh, the presentation of the charter at this event is a, a good thing as it will uh, ensure that the level of interest can be gauged and also commitment can be seen as well through, through the signature and adoption. So Lomé is, is relatively new. Um, it was not originally planned when the uh, original African Integrated Maritime Strategy was introduced. Um, subsequent events, I say the, the loss of some events, the postponement of some events has meant that a revitalization has had to occur. And uh, the charter therefore being rather substantive uh, should ensure a great deal of compliance in that regard. Problem with so often uh, in terms of things like sovereignty and states is uh, getting states to um, be bound by what is contained in this uh, this charter. Unfortunately, I do, do not have a copy of the charter with which um, we could uh, discuss bit by bit what is contained. But given the fact that the charter has been stated it is in support and in alignment of the um, African Union's 2050 AIM strategy, that means that most of the issues are not going to be new. We can discuss them in terms of what is being produced now. Uh, counter piracy uh, instruments, for instance, the ability to prevent illegal fishing, and go from there in terms of how states will uh, complement each other. There are various other strategies as well. We are really dealing here with a, uh, a jostling of attention at the AU level and also at regional level and then national obligations as well. So when I talk of regional level, we have maritime strategies at the ECOWAS, uh, the Economic Community of West African States, the uh, Economic Community of Central African States, or ECAS. Uh, EGAD, the Intergovernmental Authority for Development, has uh, recently produced its maritime strategy. And the Southern African Development Community also has a maritime strategy. That one, unfortunately, though, is confidential still. But seeing how all of them will align with the aims and also how the Charter can reinforce many of the uh, provisions within is going to be uh, something, uh, a major outcome of the Lomé Summit. The, um, the plans of action in that regard are going to be crucial. What we need to see are real concrete goals which can be um, realistically achieved. And at present, the plan of action for the AIMS strategy is slightly behind schedule. I'm not quite sure how the Charter will uh, complement that. That's a, a process which will require a a new mandate, a revised plan of action. But all of them are supposed to, as I say, complement each other in that regard. I can't stress enough the importance of coordination in this regard. There is a limited capacity of uh, many African states have very limited capacity to patrol their waters, to interact with each other on maritime issues. So uh, ensuring that there are common principles, common provisions which everybody commits to, and joint forums and places to meet and discuss these issues is crucial. Um, a lot of the infrastructure and architecture developed so far has been dominated by the, uh, the threat of piracy. Uh, this is uh, something I can return to later, but expanding to a more holistic maritime security definition, where we talk not just about the um, prevention of uh, threats, uh, the prevention of piracy, for instance, and the, and the risking of the shipping, but also a more broader long-term vision is a, is a very crucial part. And the encouragement, which we'd find perhaps in the Charter, but also the various strategies at the moment, is, um, is, a, is a good sign of progress, but uh, we'll need to see much more uh, agreements and integration afterwards for uh, 2017 and beyond. The, um, the pooling of capacity is very important. One of the major things we could see um, encouraged, but also we should uh, ensure that we uh, monitor in the future, is the sharing of information. Now, uh, uh, so many subjects, so many discussions here are originated from piracy in the maritime domain. Uh, piracy has uh, 
has created a lot of maritime domain awareness centers and information sharing networks. Now those have the ability to be used for further um, information sharing. So if there are suspicious incidences of illegal fishing, those could be used, uh, reported there, a central, central coordination mechanism in that regard. But uh, at present, many of the centers are undercapacitated and uh, a new mandate for a more holistic kind of maritime security is required. Boundaries are a major concern. The uh, hearing at The Hague at present between, uh, to, do, to determine the future of the case between Kenya and Somalia on its maritime boundary is a very interesting case uh, of how African countries can uh, pursue a resolution in the future. The ICJ, the International Court of Justice, is not the only place which maritime boundaries could be determined. So the Charter can uh, further encourage states to uh, look into the location of maritime boundaries, but not to um, pursue them uh, unilaterally, but to pursue them in a, a kind of joint fashion as well. Uh, all options there need to be exhausted. I do not think the likelihood of conflict is uh, very high in terms of uh, between countries, partly given the limited capacity of most countries, but also the fact that there is a... Uh, a growing develop, a growing uh, infrastructure, a growing governance structure to deal with this. So fully embracing that is going to be important in the future. There are some key institutions. Um, I'll mention a few here. The um, the charter and the maritime strategies were originally envisioned to be strengthened by the creation of what's called a, a high level college of champions similar to things like the Council of uh, Elders, where high-profile former statespeople can introduce or uh, maintain interest in the maritime domain. That would be a real um, outcome, is seeing who is interested, uh, who takes a lead in the, the discussions of, of the maritime domain, and who will take this further. There are opportunities, too, for meetings of uh, chiefs of African uh, navies, the, uh, there is a symposium called the Sea Power for Africa Symposium. Now, this has not been held for a few years, and uh, South Africa is scheduled to hold the next one in 2019. This is a good opportunity for, um, as I say, the, the Chiefs of Navies to meet, to agree, or to, uh, to share views, to share information, and agree on how to proceed further. Um, given, like I say, the, the limited capacity and the capacity constraints of many African states, there aren't uh, a lot of uh, potential for joint maritime patrols, African maritime patrols at regional or continental levels, but initiating that, showing and demonstrating that uh, these activities are underway and uh, are being followed is a crucial outcome of the Lomé Summit and, uh, and its follow-up events as well. Um, Africa faces like I said, a, a rather a large dilemma in terms of how to focus in the future as well. The, uh, the continental focus and the regional focus mean that the dynamics there have to be uh, worked out in terms of uh, state relations within a region. But looking from, should we say, from an ocean perspective, already invites in, uh, as, it, as it would, uh, international partners, uh, global powers who have an interest in uh, events in the maritime domain. So um, ensuring that regular and uh, coordinated uh, African meetings and African decisions on how best to proceed uh, are crucial uh, to ensure that there is a united position, uh, common provisions and common principles. Uh, the AU, for instance, could have a, uh, a maritime department uh, which could uh, take the development of a blue economy and also ensure that states are uh, continuing to abide by the provisions and, uh, and, and uh, the, many of the things which are, need to be implemented, such as support for um, maritime domain awareness centers, can be continued. Uh, the appointment of a coordinator there is very crucial. There is at present um, no coordinator for the uh, maritime activities. This is something which uh, the Lomé Summit could uh, pinpoint as a, uh, a way forward of who could be uh, appointed to lead. And also we could discuss that ourselves uh, later on. The, uh, the long-term threats are very clear. Uh, piracy is often uh, a short-term uh, threat. The, uh, the, the measures which can be introduced can reduce piracy, but the, uh, the problems of 
the inability to prevent illegal fishing and therefore the uh, creation of food insecurity in the future is going to be a major issue. The location of boundaries and the breakdown of trust which could occur between states if those aren't successfully resolved could imperil the implementation of uh, these strategies and these codes. And also ensuring that the blue economy as an idea eventually pays for itself. The, um, not in the sense of creating uh, say masses of, of, of wealth and profit without regard to uh, human security or environmental security, but ensuring politically that uh, high interest is maintained in the maritime domain and that uh, the charter, the codes and the conventions and the actions that states are expected to take can continue in the future. Uh, funding is the big crisis, uh, the big stumbling block uh, for so many. Um, it seems that there is funding available for maritime activities, provided a, uh, a concrete uh, plan of action is, and is produced, a, a mandate, for instance. So I do think that the, uh, the AU could either um, encourage further member state contributions uh, to uh, perhaps a, a maritime fund that within the AIM strategy, let's talk of a, a cap capitalization fund. But I think for the time being, the, uh, the major source of funding will come from, from donors who will, uh, who will um, put to, should we say, um, either contribute to a budget from which maritime can be drawn or directly contribute to a maritime department. Um, the AU itself has had a very limited funding for maritime. I think the, uh, the future funding it could secure, uh, provided these, uh, these kind of, uh, should we say, uh, following a line of the holding of the event, the uh, signing of a charter, the creation of a revised strategy or a revised plan of action, and the, re um, the observation of these things being implemented will introduce a lot more interest. Unfortunately, I still do not have an answer for that, despite asking a few people who have been involved in the process. The uh, confidentiality, confidentiality of the strategy could, for instance, relate to the fact that it involves sovereignty, a very sensitive issue, and how to proceed further. It also, in some respects, might give, uh, it might be seen as giving uh, adversaries a, uh, a look into the ways in which uh, states and uh, agencies will um, counteract or try and defeat uh, crime or, or threats at sea. But I, I'm not sure if that's a, a viable reason anymore, especially considering the uh, availability of other maritime strategies, ECOWAS, EGAD, ECAS, and the AU some, um, AU's own strategy as well. Uh, these kind of strategies are not military strategies, they're comprehensive security strategies. And when I meet, take security, I use it in the sense of not just guarding against threats, but also the creation or the enabling of, um, of self-determination uh, for various people, businesses, people to uh, have the means to provide for their own security rather than their own, uh, their own threats as well. So the discussions around, for instance, the Sadak Maritime Strategy has been very piracy orientated in the past. It was its context of production, for instance, uh, concerned the, uh, the attacks uh, three attacks in Mozambican waters, uh, which really, really created a massive river, river, should we say, uh, ripples rather around the uh, around the region about its vulnerability. Now, Somali pirates did not uh, proceed to uh, sail further south. Uh, we could, like I say, one of the things about piracy is that even when there isn't piracy, it's a fascinating topic to talk to, but it does tend to dominate the discussion. I can proceed to uh, discuss some of the issues around that, but uh, piracy has not become the threat, I think, that it was anticipated to be in these waters, perhaps due to the success of uh, SADAC uh, patrols and events within Somalia as well. But, uh, but um, strategies, in my understanding, are not supposed to be set in stone as such. They're supposed to be some sort of good living documents. So it is a good time now, given the uh, the summit as well as the, uh, the charter and uh, the drafting and now adoption of other strategies to revisit and, uh, and reinvigorate uh, the Sadak Maritime Strategy as well.
uh, that's one of the the big uh, the big sticking points is the, is the underreporting issue and uh, and how to address that. I'm not sure that it would be possible to oblige states to uh, have all vessels reported in, that, in African waters. We um, we're often going here in the discussion for well I'm I'm going in the discussion from uh, supranational down to national levels, and uh, and having information reported to a central uh, Focal point is a is a quite a technical and a process which we lack, I'd say, the capacity and the will for sometimes. So, in terms of a requirement for reporting, I would definitely say that the um, a requirement should be written into it, or uh, if it has been, can be interpreted to say that all suspicious activities should be reported, and uh, and widely reported as well, and that a a coordination cell. Um, either at the African Union or uh, an agreed upon uh, cell can uh, can then proceed to collate and uh, analyze the information to avoid duplication so we can get a much better and more accurate picture of uh, the state of maritime security at any one time. Given the fact that so many African countries do not have uh, agreed maritime boundaries, it is a necessary first step to uh, to agree on where those are uh, located and not to proceed with the um, unilateral sort of drawing up of oil blocks or um, areas for exploitation without due regard to how that might impact upon other other states it's a very complicated process for uh, determining these uh, these boundaries it seems very easy at first but the overall process can take a long time um, given the location of islands or the direction of the land boundary and how that projects out to sea, as well as other boundaries of neighbouring countries. For instance, uh, as an example, South Africa will have eventually a maritime boundary with France, which uh, seems a bit of a paradox. There are plenty of other maritime paradoxes. But the, uh, but the location of uh, some islands in the uh, sub-Antarctic, uh, well, the Southern Oceans, mean that uh, these kind of considerations need to be filed in the future. And because of the many other islands of countries around Africa, which are disputed as well, I'm thinking here of the Mozambique Channel, there is a lot of work to be done. A lot of patient diplomacy is required. A, um, a great deal of, uh, should we say, uh, coordination is required at the regional level. The creation of, for instance, uh, tribunals, there is was a... SADAC tribunal, which could have, uh, for instance, heard the um, dispute between Malawi and Tanzania. Now, here I'm, I'm jumping in land, I know, but uh, the African maritime domain includes uh, land, um, inland waters, should we say. And, um, and the kind of resolution there could have been heard at this kind of tribunal instead of, as we see often, taking it internationally. Um, the process itself as well, given various regional plans, regional plans for infrastructure, for development, for trade, for free trade areas as well. We are um, not often following a, a path, uh, a line of which, uh, should we, a linear step of progression. We're trying to achieve a lot of things at once. And to draw it back to the sea blindness uh, point I was raising earlier, the growing realization of how, just how dependent we are upon um, sea trade, but also the resources which we can, under international law, uh, stake uh, cl uh, claim a stake to, are, uh, are are pushing a lot of interest there. Unfortunately, a lot of these resources are transnational. And uh, again, I'd like to just uh, draw back to that point I made earlier about uh, holistic security. Is that um, transnational problems? Uh, piracy, for instance, pirates can sail between waters, but also oil deposits. They're not often going to be just neatly located within the boundaries, an, an agreed set of boundaries of countries. Um, these, for instance, could uh, require, or should I say rather, a good way of dealing in the future is a joint development. Say, so if the ultimate regional plan is a form of integration requiring cooperation and coordination, Ultimately, that means that uh, resources and uh, can be shared, rather, if there's a case for dispute. 